27th of August. We do an update from the garden. Um, pretty much the whole garden now, everything's getting on. You know, there's a few problems, like the potatoes have got blight. So I need to cut the tops off the Pentland crowns and the orla. The orla have been a bit slower to sort of deteriorate, but the, the Pentland crown, last three or four days, it's really starting to smother them now. So I can get the tops off and then leave them in the pots for now, and hopefully they'll be okay. Uh, been some replanting going on since you last sort of saw the garden. We'll have a look in the polytunnel and obviously other things. We'll probably might pick some of the smaller carrots. The big ones aren't ready yet. If they're going to be big, I don't know. It'll be another, um, another couple of weeks, but I'll pull them and see what they're like. So I'll come and get the camera and we'll have a look around how everything's getting on. Right, I'll show these pent and crown potatoes first. Um, they're quite tall. There will be potatoes on them. What size, I'm not sure. But like I say, if I leave these plants now, they'll just, um, they'll, it's inevitable, they'll end up going down and then the tubes will end up blighted as well. So it's uh, it's all over it. You know, um, patchy, all there. It's just a typical blight signs, just gets everywhere. The Pentland Crown aren't resistant to it at all, not as far as I know. I mean, it's on the back there. So um, I just need to get the tops off Make sure there's no foliage hanging around near the bottoms. Get the pots as clean as I can. And hopefully it's, none of the spores have gone in there. I'll probably mulch them up with straw um, just to stop any future spores getting in there. And uh, they'll have to wait until uh, I get back off my holiday and then I can tip them out. Celery. That's doing okay. Some of it's trying to go to seed. Um, it, it's been a dry year, really. So it's probably going to be stringy, but that's just for sauces, really. Um, Leeks, got a bit of rust on my leeks, but um, they'll be fine. I'll probably just go through and pick some of the rusty leaves off as I go. I'll just try and keep it at bay for a bit, and then obviously they'll get harvested. Yeah, let's turn around this way. These are the tender star beans. Plenty of these, but like, like I've been sort of cutting off the side shoots on these, you know, trying to and just leaving one from the bottom. To gradually start because like, there's just going to be so many beans and I'm a bit sick of beans now but all the way through there they, they pump out loads these do they're um they're supposed to be a bit of a hybrid between a french climbing and a runner bean so uh they're quite fleshy no strings and um they're nice if you can get them about four or five inch long but like any bean if you leave it you'll end up with a cricket bat swinging away <clears throat> have a look round here. The lettuce. Um, I need to pull some of these out because it's been like damping off. So like, I just think it's a fungal thing. So I pull that out, otherwise it might spread through a lot of them. Um, it's slowed right down, less, but it has been hot, you know. And obviously this bed, the spring greens look, they were here, they're gone. This is some uh, radicchio, I think it's called, like a chicory type thing. Some more rocket, because I've pulled the other rocket out, that's finished now. Um, and then some more remain, which is for the tortoise, really, for eating. Um, I'll pull some of that sweet corn after as well. This is That's the northern extra sweet. Look in the cucumber house. Um, taking all this foliage, because it's looking a bit grotty. It looks a bit like a mosaic -y sort of iris, that, but they're still producing. Um, so I've got, what, five there. Another one there, they've come right along the roof now. Yeah, this is a nice array of cucumbers still to come. So I'm probably going to get sick of these soon. But uh, nevertheless, it's been a good year for cucumbers. Even though it's a bit late to get going. This is the Anaheim um, pepper plant. You know, some red ones on there now. I need to start picking more of these, you know, to because the tops coming along I've had nothing but problems with like all the all the peppers really with like little caterpillars keep nailing coming out in the dark and trying to find them you just see one big and big horrible thing usually just buried in the compost around the stem but these are the uh these are sweet banana peppers there's loads of them these are tarquino a couple of small ones and then some bigger ones there one's turning red and that's uh, <coughs> I think it's Anaheim, not Anaheim. Uh, it's, a, it's like a, a cherry, sort of. It's a chili, actually. It's they're quite hot. 
I thought it was some sort of pepper, so I cooked it in half the other week and started chewing it and it burnt me gob a bit, so yeah, a bit out of that one. Um Brussels sprouts, they've all been staked now. They they're maximus, a couple of broccoli plants, just sort of one one here and there's one on the other side. But I think there's eleven Brussels sprout plants in there. Been in cleaned most of the foliage off the bottom and uh let them do the thing now, you know. They're all growing fairly even, they just seem to be a bit better down that bottom end, but no less doing alright. Same again here, we've got the uh, some red cherry and Anaheim and some banana ones. To be honest, if you grow them outside, they don't fruit as early, but there's less problem with pests. I think they're just more open to predators out here. So it's uh, food for thought, that one. And then we've got uh, spring onions. They've been in there ages, so they need to come out. So in the back there, I've got some more spring onions, which isn't ideal when I've got leek, a rust on my leek, because it might just come straight onto these. And the cat's been on and trampled over all on them. Like probably perk up with a bit of water. A box of uh, carrots. They might get root fly. But uh, I've been picking some of the other carrots from under that. And they've been good. So that, that net has actually worked. So I've nearly finished the back end one. So I'll be coming on to the sweet candles next. But uh, this is where the poppies were. I pulled them out because they were getting a bit tatty. And um, I thought, right, I had some peas in a module so I'll put them in there. First green shaft, if they come to anything, great. If not, they'll do for seeds. Petunias are looking a bit sorry for herself. It's just like um all the sticky stuff that goes all of it leaves. They keep drying out but these are just now I'm gonna run these to seed. Uh, down here we have some very there'll be some in there. They they are I think the Duke of York and I planted them after I did my swift reveal. So there's, there, there's probably spuds in there. I don't know. Yeah, there's a spud there. It's not squidgy. But uh, there won't be many, because there's not much top on it. Same as that one, that was part of another reveal, that one I just planted it up again. I think these were like a 90 day, and that one was a 100 day reveal. And then I just, same compost, spud straight in. They're just bonus stuff, that. Compost is cooking all right. I've been loading that up with all my junk now. It's currently cooking about 45 degrees. It needs turning need to put some air in it, really. Um, onions are all drying. I've peeled on me the red ones back to a, a single skin. So they're all under there. It'll take a bit longer to dry under there, so they don't get quite so much heat, but um, they get the airflow. That's, you know, going papery, that's the main thing. They've, you know, they've got probably a, at least another month. I don't want to string them until they're bone dry and the necks have gone really thin. So if, all I've been doing is like, you know, the odd one that's a bit damaged is use them first. When they're like this, you can keep an eye on them. And if it rains, I just put the hood over. <coughs> Kane's currently out and he's going to get him a cause yet, actually. I've just got one of me. Courgettes, well, it's kind of a courgette from Murray, you know, it's quite, quite a big thing. But uh, he's already had a full lettuce this morning, but I'm sure he's got room for more. But he's uh, he's got to enjoy this weather while he can because as soon as winter comes, he'll be back inside and he'll be miserable. Been a bit grumpy lately, I think he's getting near their sort of breeding sort of season, but uh, he's just grumpy most of the time anyway, right? Um. There's just something like a bit of sage. I grew that last year, it's just overwintered, I'll keep growing it. Some more spuds. Um, these are Duke of York, and that's a rocket. I've sprayed them for blight, but they'll probably end up inevitable. They'll get it pretty soon, so I think the Christmas spuds might be a complete washout, unless if I can get some more planted as soon as I've stripped all the tops back and there ain't any blight spores in the garden as such. But see how we go. Got peppers out. As far as I think peppers can get blight, so I'm just gonna keep an eye, but they don't get the foliage doesn't get wet on them, if you know what I mean. I've done alright for peppers, which we'll have a look at further down because I've just finished off filming the compost comparison over there, so um you can see the results of that, or you might have seen them already. Some strawberry runners, all chopped off now. One of them mammoth onions are still down there, the Kelsey's. But these are all the strawberry runners. Chucking out runners. 
which they shouldn't be doing really. But uh, just keeping them nipped off. And they'll just go through a phase and then they'll just all of a sudden just start growing fresh tips. And then I've just got to figure out where I'm going to put the strawberries next year. I'll have a look in that character when we're out. I've had some carrots out there and they're pretty good to be honest. Um, some flowers. Bumblebee up there loving it. These are all tight and um, it's probably one, two, three, four heads that I can see, I think. Um, but there is six plants all together, but two of them just failed, I think. They've got no head, they've grown so high and just sort of stayed at that. The polytunnel, um, which has done all right, been cropping. Taken bulk at foliage, I've just a bit of foliage up the top. You know, because if you haven't taken your your growing tips out of your tomato plants, you need to really begin thinking about doing that, getting rid of the growing tips. So you've got time to get everything ripened up. Um, but yeah, the alicantes have been pretty good. I mean, I've had, I've had stacks of tomatoes off these. They've been good, real big in them. I mean, I've got a couple of trays in the kitchen that I need to source down. I've blitzed a load up already. But yeah, the alicantes have done uh, really well this year. So I only did a, a picking in here, what, two days ago. Oh, sun gold's still going. Um, because obviously this is the one that I grafted here at bus, but I mean it's sent up and it's, it's growing tomatoes. There's a bit of a tangle up here with all sorts of stuff. But uh, I'll let them, let them do the thing and get more tomatoes. They're just probably back off on the watering now. Um, it will continue to keep trying to grow a tips from somewhere, just keep them nipped off. I've got a little, that was a sucker that was down there, I just shoved it in the compost, it sprouted. It's got a little fruit dress on it, so I'll leave that be. It's like that. I'll get rid of it, it's just a sucker. But these gardeners delight, you get them trying to grow from everywhere, even they like leaves. It's trusses. It's like loads of them in clusters keep trying to come out and grow at the end of fruit and vines just keep them nipped off and if you get like any clusters of you know uh tomatoes with a tiny one at the end you know at some point if it doesn't really you know because you can get rid of that one or get rid of these so I'll just put that precious energy actually into them as long as you get them somewhere near right when you know when you take them off if you leave the vine on them they'll keep ripening some people used to just rip the plant out and hang them upside down with, you know, on the plant. The rest of the energy out of the plant would just go straight to the tomatoes. So, um, what else have we got in here? This is like a, a mini cucumber plant. I've taken one off it, but it's got a few on it. Uh, nearly get about four inches. I thought I'd try it out, because I might grow them next year. Because the big cucumbers are out, but you end up a bit uh, too many. But wrapping them in cling film, putting them in the fridge, they do last for a few weeks. Um... The peppers, we've got the chilies, the basket of fire and the Apache, so that's all the hot stuff. Um, I've harvested some peppers which I'll look at, but uh, you know the bell peppers, a big bell pepper there. And I kind of, because I've done California one and that one's called Phoebes, and these are giant bell. I've got three before, uh, taste test of them all. Phoebes one is probably the nicest i think um giant bell a second the california california wonder they're okay it's just a quite tough skin but uh same again insect battered look at the orla um say so looking a bit poorly sick now these um but these have been sort of blighted for a little while and they're just because they are blight resistant to a degree um more tuba resistant i think than foliage but um, I just need to cut these tops off and yeah I'll compost them, they're all going composting so they'll all be gone today get them all cleaned um, and we've got the uh, the cobra beans and they're still producing I'll, I'll like I say the ones at the plot I'll probably finish off now um, Something you always miss, miss one. I picked these just a couple of days ago and I went through that. I'll leave that because I let it just fatten up. Cause you can take it for seed because it's not an F1 or anything. You know, another one. 
because if you keep picking the beans you'll get more but um i'm just going to try and ease the plants off a bit and take some growing tips out and just try and get a steady flow rather than the big influx um courgettes absolutely covered in mildew so i hacked them right back um because i got a bit sick of them to be honest they've been pumping loads out um so i thought right, i'll butcher them all back and i'll feed them and a bit tatty, tatty as they are just <laughs> sprouted again at the top so looks like there's another bonus crop coming to them they do tend to do better in the ground but you get a lot of them you can you can control them a bit more in the pots um got some herbs down here got the sorrel parsley basil a bit basil and that it starts when to go to see just just pinch out the growing tips like that and it'll just it'll make it put side shapes out and you'll get like a smaller bushier plant you know take don't be frightened you know you take that stem right out there if you want them two side shoots um i just it's timing on that i always try and get as best i can you know so it's kind of ready when i'm doing all my tomato sauces and that parsley fairly winter hardy you know and you can have it in salads as well Same with sorrel that rocky was just leftover stuff so if i get a space available um i'll shove that in because that'll handle cold weather as well look at these uh <coughs> peppers so these are all of the California wonder. I've got a red one there. It's uh, been on there a while. So obviously once you cut them off, all the other buds will start to swell up and you get more peppers. Because you do need to regularly pick them up. But if you leave them on there to go red, it just drains the life out. So you might just harvest them as green. You know, it's a fairly short season for peppers in this country. So if you can get green peppers, you've got a pepper. If you try and grow red, you might only get a few. But... Um, yeah, I'm happy overall. I've got some bell peppers. They're okay. You can chop them, freeze them, keep them fresh. Up to you. So it's just something else to eat. Sweet peas. Well, they're gone, man. Um, they just they just need podding now. I did take the pods off some. I fed them in the train. You know, to go again, which I thought they would. Um, these are a different strain. I think these are off... Um, mags one of the subscribers sent me some um and the, the poppies were from kath connolly so i just found a little area i could do some they were struggling at first but uh i'll keep i'll keep some of these pods i'll probably do some more of them in a pot next year and obviously some more of the petunias down here um and the telltale weed i can never remember the name of that weed but i just call it it's a pain in the backside that's what it is Humbers of other flower. I've no idea what the name of that is in the middle, but the other stuff's Lobelia, or Acer. More Acer and some Gypsophilia there. Looks a bit tatty, but I'm not really a flower to sort of guy, but I've got to stick a few in here and there. Right, so I'll have a look at these uh, carrots in this tub and uh, see what they come out like. Right, there's a couple of varieties in here, because obviously I, I sold some. Of, I can't I can never remember the, the, the variety. I don't think I've got the seed packet anymore, um, but they're all right to be honest. So I might have to try and look at some old orders. Uh, and then I saw some of them in a, a single snail got in here. It kind of worked its way around the netting and got inside and killed all the seedlings off. So I had to fill them gaps in my sweet candle. So there's a bit of a mixture in here. This is just spent compost that's in here. It's been put through a sieve with a bit of blood fish and bone meal. And I'm just, you know, I kind of, I use one of the shelves you know that you get in the little greenhouses just to give me sort of a, a grid so they're kind of like two inch well an inch and a half two inch apart you know and they've been been fairly good carrots no old pull out nice and easy quite uniform actually until he pulls out a mutated one yeah nothing wrong with them at all. There's a little tiny rump one there. Kane can have them. I give it I give Kane the tops anyway because he can eat the tops. He's just picky and doesn't like them sometimes, but he will he will eat them if he's hungry. But uh, yeah I'm happy enough with them. Been okay. So just a case of keeping all this uh, net as root fly proof as possible. I'll just gather it up at the top really. 
bit of cord around it. So, uh, yeah, I could do with finding some good sort of plastic tanks. I think I've got a big tank down there, and I might do a, a bigger box and, and get some more netting. Definitely, definitely worth netting. If you've got carrots, get the Enviro mesh. The scaffolding mesh doesn't quite work. The Enviro mesh for carrots, a must. Unless if you don't mind having loads of holes and root maggots in them. So I think that'll do for a bit of a look round, to be honest. But yeah, everything's doing all right. Nothing uh, horrendously bad. You know, obviously the blight, but you always come with blight, you know, so. I've had a good year, potato-wise. I've got my spuds that I harvested yesterday from the plot. They're all in the patio drying, so I'm going to sort through them later on. And then uh, sack them up. Um, like I say, get these all uh, sorted out. So when I come back off my holiday, there'll be another potato reveal of them. Uh, probably do all the potato reveals, actually. Um, which will be, obviously, the, the Orla. I think there's 16 of them in them polypots. And then there's the Pentland Crown. I think there's... It, can't remember how many pots there are down there, but it's nine or eleven. Um, I think it's nine, so there'll be like eighteen spuds, eighteen of the Pentland crowns. And it's just a case of like you know, getting things ready. You know, if you're going to plant something else in, I mean, I've got some other things sown. I've got some spring greens and some mazunia and stuff like that, which you'll probably end up going where the potatoes are. At the moment, down the garden, the Pentland crowns. There'll be a strip along the fence there. Make a little net closh up. No, just over winter, you know. So, thanks for watching. Take care, and I will see you next video. See you now. Bye bye.